This video will do an example of how to calculate the average energy of a system uh, when you're given the energy of a few states in statistical mechanics. So in the last few videos we've derived how to calculate the average energy of a system and that's been all, all been fairly abstract so I want to give a little bit more of a concrete example of how to do this in practice. So this would be how to use the kind of weighted average formula I have when you only have a few states that you're given. So what I'm going to say is I have three states here. I have one state which is an energy of zero wave numbers. So that, that's a unit of energy, wave numbers, but it comes from uh, spectroscopic numbers that usually there's some uh, inverse wavelength of a photon that it takes to absorb to get to that energy level. But for now, we'll just say that it's, it's a unit of energy that we're going to convert to or from. But it's a very common unit of energy and one that you might see in your courses. So we have one at zero wave numbers with a single, singly degenerate system. We have a doubly degenerate energy level at 50 wave numbers. And we have a triply degenerate uh, energy level at 100 wave numbers. So how are we going to calculate the average energy of the system? So the average energy is equal to a sum over all the levels of the, their probability times the energy of that level. The probabilities is 1 over the partition function of their degeneracy times their Boltzmann factor, e to the minus energy divided by Boltzmann constant times temperature. And the partition function is the sum over all of the levels of their degeneracies times the Boltzmann factor. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to convert the Boltzmann factor into units which are appropriate for this system. The Boltzmann factor or sorry, the Boltzmann constant. The Boltzmann constant by default is in units of joules per Kelvin. So I'm going to convert that from joules to wave numbers. And it ends up being a very convenient value in wave numbers per Kelvin. So the Boltzmann constant is 1.3806 times 10 to the minus 23 joules per Kelvin. And then we divide that by Planck's constant times the speed of light to get that into wave numbers. 6.6261 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds times 2.9979 times 10 to the 10 centimeters per second is the speed of light in centimeters per second, which is how we get it into wave numbers or inverse centimeters. And that gives us a value of the Boltzmann constant of 0 0.69503 wave numbers per Kelvin. So that's very convenient for us because that's a pretty easy number to keep track of and move around. <clears throat> all right, so what is our partition function? Well, our partition function is the sum over all the levels of its degeneracy times the Boltzmann factor for that level. So we have 1 times degeneracy of 1 times e to the minus 0 over 0 0.695t plus 2e to the minus 50 over 0 0.695t, g2 equals 2, e2 equals 50, plus 3e to the minus 100 over 0 0.695t, in this case g3 equals 3, and e3 equals 100 wave numbers. All right, when we multiply that out, we have q equals 1 plus 2e to the minus 71.94 over t, plus 3e to the minus 143.9 over t. All right, what are the probabilities of each level? That's 1 over Q times their degeneracy times their Boltzmann factor. So the probability of level 1 is 1 over Q. Degeneracy of 1, Boltzmann factor of 1, uh, divided by Q. P2 equals 2, divided by Q, times E to the minus 71.94 over T. P3 equals 3, E to the minus 143.9 over T, divided by Q. All right, so our total energy is each of these probabilities times the energy of that level. So the energy is equal to 1 over Q times uh, P1 E1, which is 1 over Q times E1, plus 2 E2 E to the minus 71.94 over T, plus 3, the Q is factored out, E3 to the, times E to the minus 143.9 over T. All right, so this is actually our total energy as a function of the temperature. So if we substitute in these values of 0, 50, and 100 wave numbers and various temperatures, 
we'll get various expressions for what each of these probabilities in the partition function are and what the energy of the system is at that temperature. All right, so we start off at a temperature of zero. The partition function is one because we get one, zero, zero. The probability is going to be one over one, one over zero, or zero over one, zero over one. So we get one, zero, and zero. So we get one times zero plus two times zero plus three times zero. So zero there. So the total energy is zero. It's just the energy of the ground state. All right, at 25 Kelvin, we can recompute the partition function and all these probabilities. We get 1.12, and there's still a 90% chance we're in the ground state, but there's a 10% chance we're in the second state. And there's a about a 1% chance that we're in the uh, third state. So the average energy here, using this expression, ends up becoming about 5.86 wave numbers. So we're about 10% of the way between E1 and E2 as you would expect from these probabilities. At 50 Kelvin, we see our Q goes up and our probabilities change. 60% in the ground state, 30% in the second state, 10% in the, th in the t highest energy state. Average energy is 25 wave numbers, halfway between here and here. Temperatures going up, we're seeing our energy go up as our probabilities change. At 100 Kelvin, they're almost all equal. The energy is 44 wave numbers, almost up to E2. Then as the temperatures get higher, E1 start, P1 goes down more, uh, P2 starts going down as P3 starts going up, and that continues all the way up until T equals infinity, where we're approaching a partition function of 6, and all of states are equally likely, so the probability is just proportional to the degeneracy of each state, of each level. So we have 1 sixth, 2 sixths, or 1 third, and three sixths or one half for the probabilities, giving us a final energy of 67 wave numbers above E2 and uh, two th uh, one third of the way up to E3. So those are some examples at some specific temperatures. Uh, I've got some graphs here on Desmos, which is a free online graphing calculator, so links to this graph in the description. So what I've got plotted here is versus temperature, I have the probability of state one, probability of state two, and probability of state three versus temperature, as I do the value of the total partition function and the total energy of the system. So as I take my temperature and I slide it up here to various values, you see at zero, the energy is, is zero. If I move that up to 100, you can see what I saw there, the energy levels, the energy is getting up there, it's 44.6. Then as the energy continues to go up, the probabilities change and the energy is approaching that final value that I mentioned where it's going to approach 66 as the temperature gets very high. So you can play around with, uh, with this if you like, you can put in different energies, different energy levels, uh, see all those things as much as you like. This is just one example of one kind of system to give us an idea of what are actual the actual numerical values that result and how do we actually do an example for calculating this average energy in practice for a system where we have a few energy levels.